Well, uh, this is the station. Usually two students per station would be working on the equipment and the uh, lab. Uh, as you can see, each station has three rows. One row on top, the other row in the middle, and the third row is basically the heavy equipment of oscilloscope. We will be using oscilloscope in lab number four and lab number five. I'll give an explanation on how to use this later. For lab number one, I want to uh, explain the equipment we are going to use. Uh, one of them is actually a power supply. This is, um, this is supposed to provide to us DC uh, output. Now, as you can see, there is a power button. I'm going to push this on. Uh, if I want to turn this off, I simply push it again. So here is the scenario. If you carefully examine the front panel of this power supply, you see it has a display. The voltage is shown on this part. This is the current drawn from the uh, power supply. If the current that is drawn from the power supply is excessive, uh, this overload is going to uh, turn on. And obviously, you would also notice from the uh, values shown on the display. So please have a careful observation of the overload lights or the value you might have on this. Now, if you take a look at this, I have V1 and in a different color, uh, um, uh, light gray, I have V2. I have V1 and I have V2. I have V1 and I have V2. And this is the ground. Uh, this is the common node, this is an extra node, and if I wanted to utilize this for a ground, a reference, or something else, you, I would. Typically, you don't need to use that inside this lab. So what I'm going to do, um, this is providing me two different power supplies, but in this lab, I just need one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus only on one power supply. I'm going to make sure V1 is pushed in, that gives me to, uh, the chance of playing with V1 naught, and these two would be the outputs. The red is going to be the positive node of the power supply, the black is going to be the negative node of the power supply. Now, if you take a look at the V1, you can see if I play with this, please observe this value, you can see that the value is actually going to change the voltage of this power supply. It's a DC, but I have a control over this. And then I'm going to actually utilize these two pins. For example, I'm going to have red to red. Typically speaking, those certified engineers would usually make sure the colors follow, but you don't have to in this, this lab. And I'm, I'm now ready to use power supply on my design. So let's turn this off. Generally speaking, I don't want the power supply to be on, but I'm making the connections of the circuits. So uh, let's take this off. The system is off in that sense. So that's one equipment I needed to talk to you about. The next one is a fixed resistor. The fixed resistor, if you take a look at this fixed resistor, it has uh, a number of columns. Column one, column two, column three, and column four. Now, the resistors, uh, we need to actually read the uh, values using the color code provided in the lab manual, as well as the color code I just showed you inside the lab, each lab has a poster showing what the, how to read the uh, resistor. Uh, students took the liberty to actually note some of the values on the resistor. The first one, you see one, two, three, third column. The first one is 4.7K. The second one is 6.8K. 10 kilo ohm, 10 kilo ohm, 15 kilo ohm, and 22 kilo ohm. These five resistors are, are supposed to be sufficient enough for lab one, two, and three. So usually you don't need anything else until lab number four and five. So I'm, I have 4.7 to play with, 6.8 and 10K for lab number one, these three resistors. Each resistor, as you can see, has a metal uh, parts attached to it. And this metal goes underneath the, uh, basically the package and it shows itself on these two. So if I want to access this, I have to access this node. If I want to access this, I have to access this node. In order to access this resistor, I just need to utilize these two pins. Please make sure that the pins belong to the resistor. 
this pin does not belong to this resistor. So please uh, make sure that's the way it's going to be. So these two, these two, and these two uh, would be uh, the pins I'm going to utilize in this lab. This is fixed resistor in the sense that I can change that. Of course, one thing you need to keep in mind that because of the tolerances, the value 4.7 is the nominal. So basically, they might have 10% tolerance, 5% tolerance. So it's going to be 4.7K plus 10% of its value or minus 10% of its value. So at this time, we are going to uh, uh, focus on 4.7. Uh, in, the, in the process, I'm going to show you how to measure this. So that's my fixed resistor. I'm going to use the next equipment I want you to get to know is the meter. This one and this one, they are identical. We need two meters sometimes, some of them, one of them for the amp meter, another one for the volt meter. What I'm going to do, each one of them has a green button underneath. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to push this in. The system is going to turn on. It has a display on it. If you, if you take a look at the display carefully, you can see a number of important uh, units and values mentioned. First of all, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 is going to fluctuate. That's the accuracy you would be seeing in the meter. If you take a look at this, it's MV. M stands for milli. Milli is 10 minus 3. V is what? If you carefully examine the next one, it's DC direct current, and that's what we are going to do in lab number one and two and three. So this is zero millivolts DC. It is automatic, and at this time, it could be positive or negative. So we want to read this properly. This is my display. If you examine the left-hand side of the mirror, you are going to see volt ohm diode. This is a diode. We won't know about this until the next level, the next course, that you would, you, you would be taking in the, uh, in the electrical engineering department. This is the common node. So this common node is going to be utilized, whether this equipment is going to be meant for amp meter, volt meter, or ohm meter. This is always used. That's why it's called common. Now, this one is 100 milliamp, and this one is 10 amp. So how am I supposed to use this as a volt meter, for example? I'm going to explain that in a moment. Now, if you take a look at another uh, number of buttons, important buttons, that are going to be useful for us, you can see V with a dash line. You can see A with a dash line. You can see V with a sine tilde, sine cosine function, AC in that sense. A, AC. So this is voltmeter DC, voltmeter AC. This is ampmeter DC ammeter AC, and this is ohm. So if I wanted to utilize this one as a voltmeter DC, I'm going to make sure that this one is pushed in. Typically, when I turn on the equipment, it is set this way. So if you want to use this for ammeter or ohmmeter, you have to make sure that you have pushed the amp or ohm accordingly. And similarly, if you want to use it for AC, a measurement, you have to utilize these keys. So these are the important keys on the front panel of the meter we have. Now, I want to use this. Uh, as you can see, each of these meters are actually coming in with some wires connected to that. These wires are needle type. So uh, they, uh, we, we are going to see the challenges involved with the needle type wires. So this one, for example, is going to go into the red because I'm going to do V as voltmeter. This one is going to go into the black. So that's my uh, two, uh, two inputs to the voltmeter. I have pushed the V to make this a voltmeter for DC. And I'm now ready to measure the voltage across anything, any component, or the power supply. So here it is. I want to show you what happens. I'm going to turn on this power supply. It gives me 1928. I'm going to put, let's just be careful at this moment, I'm going to put black into the black and red into the red. 1929, I see 19460. Each equipment has its own error. But in this lab, we would like to actually read this one. I know that this may have its own tolerances and errors, but we want to trust this more. So please read 
all the voltages requested of you off of the voltmeter, 19.458. You don't have to go all the three digits. Just 19.45, that's enough. 19.4 is enough for the entire calculation you have. Now, what happens if I don't follow the color code? In this case, nothing seriously, though. Let's put the black into the red and the red into the black. So I'm going to put the black into the red and red into the black. You see the same value, 19.4, 5, or something, but you can also see a negative sign. So as soon as you see a negative sign, if your reference is not fixed, that negative sign, you can ignore it. But if the reference in the system is fixed, as is required in lab number two, then you have to simply make sure your reference is properly placed by the black pin, and any no other node is actually measured or observed by the red pin. So in that sense, this minus sign can be properly interpreted. One thing you may have noticed, and that is I have used this as a voltmeter, and I actually put this in parallel with my equipment. We always use voltmeter in parallel. Voltmeter, theoretically, is supposed to have an, uh, an infinite impedance. So the impedance inside is supposed to be infinity, which means it's almost a broken line. So if you put that in series, you have actually unintentionally have broken the line. We need the voltmeter to be always in parallel with anything we want. Now I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go into the new one. I'm going to take a look at this one. This is, I'm going to utilize this as my amp meter. Now you see, as by default, this is going to be volt, this is going to be DC, but I said I want to use it as an amp meter. So I'm going to actually put this into the black. Black is always there, so this is the common node. There are my wires, this is my wires. And then the red goes into either 100 milliamp or 10 amp. So because I'm not using, I'm not uh, experimenting with too high of a current, I'm going to actually use this one. I'm not done. I'm going to push the A and make sure this one is reads is going to read as milliamp, amp, whatever it is. So I'm going to make sure that this one is set properly. I pushed A D C to measure amp in DC value. So this would be amp meter, this would be voltmeter. 